Hey everybody, my name's Jammin and I am cutting some leaves, trimming the hedges, doing a little yard work, if you will. Oh, I'm just getting ready for a little bit of a build we're going to do today. It's nothing serious. Oh, there goes my shears. Guess that's good. Yep, we're going to be working on a road a little bit. As well as making that town look a lot more abandoned. I just figured I would get a little bit of materials while we're at it. You know, you know how it is, Minecraft. You got to make sure you got what you need. Come on, let me get up. Thank you. Get what you need. You got to get what you need. Can't always get what you want, but you gotta get what you need. Now, I did a little bit of stuff off camera, not too much in the way of building, but I did go back to that same cave that we were. What? I, stuck in a block? Come on. Game. Just, just play. Just play. All right. I got some more, some more resources. Just the simple stuff. I know you, you probably saw me running past a whole bunch of cobble and a whole bunch of iron. Stuff that I could really use pretty soon. I mean, I think an anvil is going to come in real handy. Since we're not probably, we're probably not going to bother with bookshelves for our enchanting table for quite some time. I think doing low-level enchants on books and then upgrading them is probably a really good idea for us, considering we're alone in this world stranded on this island surrounded by nothing but nothing however will we go on small enchantments would work but we're not gonna do anything crazy today I think we're just gonna enjoy a little bit of the minecraft sunshine which is always good you know we've been spending a lot of time underground or underwater man this uh, the rendering just render faster Usually it runs a lot better than this. I guess it's just because I got fraps going at the same time as everything else. Just recycle that bad boy. You know, I want to be able to see my boat hanging off in the distance. Just chilling. Underwater. But I can't see it because the game won't render. For crap's sake. But yep, here we are. We're back. And I have a bunch of leaves and a bunch of wood. But first, let's let's do a little bit of tidying up here. I don't like how prim and proper this section looked. It's kind of frustrating to me when it's all... It, it, sometimes it looks unnatural, you know? You gotta, you gotta change it up a bit. Have a little bit of differentiation. Otherwise it just looks bland and boring and not very fun. So you, you try and randomize it as best you can. You pop in some, some holes here or there. And what I always find helps is throwing some of these guys down. You know, yes, they could kind of get in the way of our road, but at the same time, I mean, what looks more natural than dirt falling off the side of a cliff? Maybe, maybe not having a cliff made out of completely dirt, but that's okay. This is Minecraft after all. <laughs> There's only so much that can happen. But how's everybody doing today? I hope you guys have been enjoying the new series and the new look of the uh, the YouTube channel, the old jammin' channel, if you will. I've been putting a lot of time into making sure everything's starting to look nice, you know. It took me <laughs> a couple months to figure out how the whole custom thumbnail thing worked. Really, it's not that complicated. I just never really thought about it, I guess. Um, I, just, I was waiting for a message from YouTube or in my... Uh, where it says what I'm allowed to do, I was waiting for it to say, hey, you can now use custom thumbnails. But it was just one day custom thumbnails were available to me, and I, I just didn't notice for a very long time. Uh, let's make a few of these guys. A few of these guys. But yeah, I've been putting a lot of effort into trying to make sure that things look really nice. At least a lot more effort than I was doing before. And uh, I hope you guys notice. I hope you appreciate. I, uh, I do it for you. I love doing this, and I want to make it look real pretty for you, uh, as best I can anyway. Uh, I'm not exactly the most talented <laughs> graphic designer or uh, even video editor. I'm, I'm still learning. I'm still new to this. But I think, I think we're getting somewhere, and obviously it'll take a little bit of time, but I don't see why we can't get there together. Hand in hand... We go together like peanut butter and jelly. Oh man, get too busy singing my, my my silly songs, and I forget to do 
the most important thing when it comes to crafting, which is picking up your crafting items. So you guys are big fans of this game? I know I know a lot of people went crazy over Minecraft for a while. And one of the reasons I never played it until about oh, I guess almost a year ago was because everyone was hyping it up as, oh, this game is amazing, you gotta play this game, it's the best game ever, and then it came out on the Xbox, and I started hearing a bunch of people whose opinions about video games I don't really appreciate saying how awesome this game was, and, and to me that just meant, well, if these guys who like this game that I don't like, like Minecraft, why would I like Minecraft? But they liked it for vastly different reasons. I know one guy that I used to work with in Toronto before I moved out here to Vancouver. Um, he was that, that typical Call of Duty guy, you know, that jerk who's no matter what you say or do or how many times you beat him, he's, he's still the best player in the world, you know. No one can touch his awesome skill. And uh, <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily say that this guy and I were friends, but we did work together, and so you kind of have to spend some time talking. As much or as little as you like to or not, it's it's kind of part of the job. It's part of just about any job. You're always going to deal with people that aren't exactly <laughs> your favorite. But I eventually tried this game out. Um, back before I bought a new computer, I had an old MacBook. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Laugh it up, guys. Laugh it up. I was using a MacBook. But I got Minecraft, and I... I loaded it up on the MacBook and was immediately impressed. It was just really hard to get a good depiction of what this game could actually be because of how crappy my computer was. Um, now, not too long ago, I guess probably four months ago, I bought this new computer, which has been working just great. If you haven't noticed, it's been the thing that allows me to upload videos and make some decent content for you guys or at least what I think is decent content but it wasn't until I really got to see it on this computer that it really blew me away like look at this you don't get this kind of situation in other video games so you, you might get some level designers that come in and build something like this but to have it just generate naturally on its own it's it's amazing I, I, I am still flabbergasted by it uh, enough so to use the word flabbergasted, which I I don't do normally. <laughs> Trust me. Flabbergasted I am indeed. But I, I love this game, and I think I always will. Because it's, it's so open-ended, and a lot of people say there's no point to the game. It's just, you know, there's no reason to keep on playing it. I disagree completely. This is the only video game I know of that you can walk in here and you can do whatever you want. You can create your own scenarios. You can you can play this game any way you want. Sure, you can go out and do the adventure mode and just get the stuff you need to to fight the the Ender Dragon, or you can just go and collect so many resources that you'll never have to go down to a cave again. Look at my tools breaking left, right, and center. Or you can come in here and you can just build to your heart's content. Or you can do a mixture of all these things. And and that's kind of what I like to do is depending on the day, depending on my mood, I might wanna I might wanna build, I might wanna craft a bunch of stuff, I might wanna go caving. And it's the only game I know where you can come in and not be told by the game, hey, you have to go crafting. Hey, you need to go and get me this many of this resource. No, it's you pick. What do you wanna do today? What do you, what is your choose your own adventure? Did you guys ever read those books when you're kids? The choose your own adventures? Flip to page 22 if you decide to kill the dwarf. Flip to page 79 if you decide to pet the dwarf. Flip to page 342 if you would like to read the dwarf a, a bedtime story and give him a glass of milk. <laughs> if none of these options are good for you, make up your own and flip to page 439. You know, Th that's what I feel this game is. This game is just a vast, open, choose-your-own-adventure. And it is great. I love it. But I think I'm going to take a quick break here, guys. I'm going to go and prepare a little bit more and finish up this road to my liking. And then we're going to go and we're going to start tearing down that, that village. And we're going to make it look abandoned for sure. I'll be right back with you. 
Just taking a stroll down the old cobble road, and man, does it ever look nice in here. A little bit run down, but I think it's I think it's gorgeous. And hey, our stupid derpy slow horse is here hanging out. He's got a nice spot. That's good. But yeah, look at this. Not not too shabby, huh? Maybe I overdid it a little bit, but I figure this is the first leg. Oh, I gotta eat some food. That's not good. Can't do much on a hungry belly. But uh, this is the first leg of our journey down the cobble road, and I wanted it to be kind of a a nice one, a memorable one, you know? Because I imagine if we were stranded on this island, probably you'd spend quite some time near the very first area you start. Um, but since this is an abandoned village, not a villager in sight, I think we start should start tearing this place down. We're not going to go all the way. We're not going to break everything. But we are going to have to make it look a little bit run down, beat down. A little bit worse for wear if you catch my drift. I think doing something like that might have a good effect. And we could always go like this and sub in some of these guys maybe some of these guys you know that looks like a pretty derped up house wouldn't you say could have been a house once upon a time but not looking so good now I don't really know how to make the ground look worse although for for the foundations for something like this uh huh uh huh, uh -huh. Uh huh. Could do one of these. You know, like there's a big old hole in the foundation. I think that's pretty cool. Maybe do the same right here. I'm gonna have to craft some more stairs. I was not prepared. Dang it, jam it! Get with the program. I kind of like that because you can actually see all the way through to the other side there. Ooh, cool breeze just came through the window. That's really nice. It's been quite warm here in Vancouver. We're getting pretty close to the rainy season, though, and I'm kind of afraid. This is my first rainy season in Vancouver, and the the people here have been saying that it is wet. And now, of course, as you'd presume, water wet. Aha, got it. But apparently around here, it, it rains for like 10 months, nonstop, just downpour. And I don't know, I don't know exactly what they mean by that, but... I have a feeling I'm going to find out very soon. Because we've had some gorgeous weather here. Screw you, glass. Go away. For the last summer. Just stunning. Oh, I'm going to destroy that ladder. Sorry, ladder. Your time is numbered. Your time is up. I guess I should take down this wall as well. Um, now, where I'm used to living, back in Toronto, it's... Uh, yeah, it it definitely rains. Got to get rid of these now. What was I thinking there? Leave those ones up. That's fine. It definitely rains. However, when it rains, it it pours for about 15 minutes to an hour. And then just like that, poof. Rain's gone. No rain to worry about, nothing to cry about. Just you know, sucks that there's no sunshine today, but hey, it's going to rain and it's going to stop. And you know that that's the way it's going to be. Why did I do that? Oh, yeah. Let's, uh, let's try putting one of these there. Just to see if that makes it look messed up. And it kind of does make it look pretty messed up. Um, get one of these in here. I guess I could, uh, you know, like a pile of dirt or something. Because I guess it's just over so overrun. Um, yeah, and, you know, during the winter time. It would snow most of the time. Not every year, but it would snow. Um, I think I just want to leave just the front facade of this one. Everything else is going. This is a good way to gather some resources, too. Cutting down some houses. And when, and when it did snow, it could get down to minus, minus 25. You know, that was the worst, the worst temperature I ever saw Toronto get to. It was about minus 25. And if you're, you know, if you're from Canada, you know minus 25 is probably not that bad. Toronto's pretty far south in terms of Canadian geography. 
Um, so the it's really, really not that cold. I did spend a winter in the Rocky Mountains, the Canadian Rocky Mountains, in a place called Lake Louise, Alberta. It's in Banff Provincial Park or National Park or whatever the heck it is. Great place. I loved it. But it would get down to minus 45 there. Minus 45. Are you kidding me? Minus 45. That's insane. And it was cold, but there would be six feet of snow. And for someone like me, who's uh, Scandinavian in background, cold is nice. Cold is good. Cold and snow are kind of what uh, you know I'm used to. It's what I've known my whole life. It's what I enjoy. Now we got to do something a bit different for this house. This house looks like a good one to set up in a nice way. Cut out this corner but we want it to make it look like it's kind of sagging in. So, up it up it up. Yep, and we'll do another one like this and like this. And yep, that's good. And we can we can take a couple more of these guys out now. You don't need a stupid table. You're a broken down house. What do you need a table for? Ah, uh, ah! Uh, what do you guys think? Kind of looks like a caved-in roof. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. We'll leave that for now. That's good. I like that. But people complain about the weather in Canada. It's it's a fallacy, you know. It's a, someone's always gonna have a problem with with the temperature or the precipitation, and like anywhere else in the world, it's it's because weather happens and people never really get used to it. <laughs> there is weather prepare for it. Now, the only time I've ever had a hard time dealing with weather was when I was too stubborn to dress accordingly. You know, if it's minus 20 outside, put on some freaking snow pants and a hat. You know, you take that as a lesson if you want, but I know when people are whining and complaining about, oh, it's so cold outside, you know, I've got to go to work at 7 in the morning and, you know, I'm just I'm wearing my leather shoes and, and my thin winter coat, my, my windbreaker even, you know, and I just I just wish it would be warmer. Well, stop wishing because it's not going to get warmer. <laughs> Go buy a freaking jacket, man. It's Canada. It's not freaking Miami. <laughs> Prepare yourself. Otherwise, you will not enjoy yourself. And I've always found the people who... You know, like here in Vancouver, I'm sure the people who have umbrellas, uh, have have those goofy-looking rain jackets. <laughs> I call them goofy, but they're really not. They're really quite useful. Uh, those people that have maybe those big cover shells for their bikes so they can still bike around in the winter time. You know, those are probably the people that truly enjoy themselves the most during the season because they have the opportunity to go out. It's the same thing. If you if you're going to the desert, why is there cobble underneath here? Oh, it must just be natural. It's the way they generate, I guess. My bad. If you're going to the desert, you don't pack a sweater. Well, actually, you do pack a sweater because at nighttime in the desert it can get pretty cold. If you're uh, okay, let's let's try and think about that a better way. If you're going to the desert, you're gonna bring some water, right? Well, if you're going into the Arctic. <laughs> and much of Canada is in the Arctic, not the part where I am staying, however, you bring some frickin' clothes for snow. Plain and simple. You don't do that, you probably die. So, all I'm gonna try and do is prepare my best for the winter, see how it goes, and hopefully we can make something out of it. But I think that's gonna be the end of the episode for today. Sorry it was a bit more of a talky one. I do have a tendency to ramble every now and then. But let's step back and take a look at our work and see how decrepit this place looks. Well, I definitely would not think that is a home to anybody. I think we can do a bit more though. Changing up the color of the wood a bit more. So throwing in... Yeah, I don't have the full, full block so I'll just use slabs. But, you know, changing up a color like that really makes it look run down and beaten up and just worse for wear and... Maybe throwing in a few half slabs here or there. I don't know. Why don't you guys leave a comment down below and tell me what you think. See what's, uh, see if you like what I'm doing, where you think I'm going right or wrong here. 
would really love some feedback, especially on the Minecraft series, because there's so much that we can do together to actually, you know, make this a little bit more than me talking to you guys. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of The Cobble Road. My name's Jammin. As always, that is spelled with a silent X. Oh, can I make it? Whew, close one. Silent X. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you guys so much. No! <laughs> I almost made it. Uh, thank you guys watch for watching. Oh, I can't speak because of all this crap that's going on. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next episode. Bye for now.